KVL Connect Tracker lets you view the depth matrix of the Connect or the RGB matrix of the Connect. Um, and you can, as you see here, you can change the minimum and maximum distance of the depth matrix that you want to, to view and deal with. Um, the, uh, what you're seeing here is actually the depth matrix just normalized uh, in grayscale from 0 to 1 depending on the distance, the minimum and maximum distance that we want to deal with. And these distances are all in meters. So you can see that I'm just changing the, uh, the minimum and the maximum and removing portions of 3D space from the tracker. You can also then do background subtraction if you turn that on and set the reference frame. Uh, and the cool thing about this, I'm doing some erosion and other things with CB.jit that um, makes the, you, know, you can see my head is very skinny here, um, but it allows you to remove 3D objects from the scene. I'm actually sitting on a chair that's removed from the scene right now. As an alternative to background subtraction, or in addition to it, um, there's a plane culling feature. So you can define up to six different culling planes in the Connect Depth Matrix that let you carve out custom areas of the matrix that you want to pay attention to. So now I'm, I'm turning plane culling on and enabling the plane to cull the floor of the space. You can see as I turn that on and off, it gets rid of the depth values uh, at the floor level. And now the right wall is removed, or the right side of the matrix. And then the left side, and then I'll do the ceiling. So this allows you to, and you can, you can orient these planes in any way that you want. Um, de each plane is defined by three XYZ points. Um, and so now I've removed all of the walls except for the back. So I'm going to disable this, change the max distance, and then re-enable it. And now I've carved out a custom area of 3D space in front of the camera, ignoring all the sides and the back and the ceiling. And I can, in, in addition to this, now I could use background subtraction if I had some objects um, sticking up that I want to ignore. This also functions as a server. Uh, in the config file, you can define as many client destinations as you want. And this window shows the ones that are defined right now. And it will send out open sound control messages uh, of blob locations that the Connect is uh, detecting, or that this tracker is detecting. Uh, and it sends them in multiples of six element lists um, with a label, an XY pixel space coordinate, and an XYZ meter uh, uh, coordinate. Um, in real space. By default, the, um, the tracker sorts blobs uh, in, uh, from nearest to farthest from the camera. So you can see that when I move behind the chair, blob number one is the chair, and so on. So it does simple blob sorting based on depth. If you don't want the automatic sorting to happen based on depth, um, you can turn tracking on, and this implements a, a depth-sensitive tracking method um, that tries to keep labels attached to blobs. Um, and it does so by considering the depth as well as the, uh, the horizontal and vertical location of the blob. So you can see now that my head is still blob 3 even though the other blobs have disappeared. It doesn't reassign labels. As long as the blob is, uh, is within a threshold distance from its previous frame, it will keep that label. So now you can see that because we're, we're taking into account depth, I can move blob number 1 in front of blob number 2 and it remains blob number 1 and vice versa. Blob labels don't get detached from the blobs themselves because we're considering depth in addition to the horizontal and vertical.